Chapter 2 Voter Registration Process In this chapter, we will review the process for registering a voter. Each client must be given the opportunity to register to vote. Provide the applicant with an authorization form. This form allows the applicant to accept or decline the opportunity to register to vote. Hi, would you like to register to vote? Yes, please. Okay, can you please fill out this release information? And this is the actual application. And I'm sorry, Ms. Rodriguez, this does have to be completed in black or blue ink. Oh, okay. The registration application is a legal document and must be completed in black or blue ink. Applicants are required to fill out box 1. If the applicant is not a U.S. citizen, he or she is not qualified to register to vote. The applicant must also be 18 years of age or older on or before election day. An applicant who is 17 years of age or older but less than 18 years of age and has continuously resided in this state for 30 days or longer may pre-register to vote. If a person pre-registers to vote, he or she shall be deemed to be a registered voter on his or her 18th birthday. Box 2 is a required field. The applicant must give their last name, first name, and middle name or initial, and suffix if applicable. The residential address, um, I'm moving soon. Can I just go ahead and put my PO box? Actually, they do need your current residential address right now. You can put your PO box um, for the mailing. So in the mailing, I can put PO box or my business? Yes, and then once you settle, you can contact the election department or go onto their website to change that address. Oh, okay. I'll go ahead and make a note on my phone to call the election department. Great. Box 3 is a required field and is for the applicant's residential address. Address must be complete, including city, state, and zip. Post office boxes and business addresses are not acceptable as a residence address unless the applicant actually resides at their business. Box 4 of the application is for a mailing address if it is different than the residence address. Make sure the applicant also gives the city, state, and zip as well as the P.O. box. For the year of birth, we need your actual year of birth, not uh, this current year. Can I go ahead and scratch it out? Just put a line through it and initial next to that. Box 5 is a required field and asks for the applicant's birth date. The most common mistake on an application involves this box. Many people write in the current year as the birth year or skip this box entirely. On box number 6, can I go ahead and just put the city? Actually, it's state or country. Can I spell it out or abbreviate it? Either or is fine. Box 6 is optional and is for the state or country where the applicant was born. Box number 7 says telephone number. Do I really have to provide my telephone number? It's not a required field. You don't have to. Oh, okay. Box 7, the telephone number, is optional. On box number 8, it says driver's license or ID card. I do know my California ID number. Can I provide that? You need your Nevada driver's license number or ID or the last four of your social. Box 8 is required. The law requires the applicant to provide their Nevada driver's license or Nevada ID number. If the applicant does not have a Nevada-issued ID from the Nevada DMV, then he or she can provide the last four digits of their social security number. Box number nine says military. Oh, that's just for uh, military. Are you in the service? Are you a dependent or a spouse? No. Okay, so you can just go on to the next question. Okay. Box nine should be completed only if the applicant is a member of the military, a military spouse or dependent, or U.S. citizen overseas. Box 12, I don't have a party. Can you help me with that? Unfortunately, I'm not able to. You can go online, maybe ask some friends and family and do some research. However, in order for the application to be submitted and completed, you do have to choose a party. So maybe um, I would suggest doing nonpartisan right now. Once you've done your research, contact the election department and they can send you out a new application or you can go onto their website and change that yourself. Okay. Box 12 is a required field in which the applicant must choose a party affiliation. Nevada is a closed primary state, meaning that in order to vote for a partisan office in a primary election, a voter must be registered with a major party, either Democrat or Republican. If the applicant registers as nonpartisan or with a minor party, 
they can vote only a nonpartisan ballot. General elections in Nevada are open, meaning voters vote the same ballot regardless of party affiliation. The applicant may contact the parties directly for information. Contact information for the political parties can be found on both the Election Department website and on the Secretary of State's website. The applicant may also make changes to his or her registration information on either of these websites. Okay, Ms. Rodriguez, in Box 13, I do need you to read the declaration and sign with today's date. Box 13 is a required field. The applicant is affirming that he or she is a U.S. citizen at least 18 years old or at least 17 years old and pre-registering. Applicant affirms that he or she has continuously resided in Clark County for at least 30 days and his or her precinct for at least 10 days before the next election. Applicant also affirms that he or she has listed his or her legal residential address and claims no other place as legal residence and is not currently serving a term of imprisonment for a felony conviction. The applicant must sign and date this box. If the applicant is not physically able to sign his or her name, an X is acceptable. Someone holding a power of attorney for the applicant is not allowed to sign for them. Applicants with a physical disability may use a signature stamp. On box 14, I just can't remember my old address. That's okay, just provide the last city and state in there. Okay. If the applicant is registered in a different state or county, he or she should complete box 14. Okay, I'm done. Okay, let me take a look and make sure all of the fields are completed. You must check the completed application for accuracy. There are seven boxes that are required to be filled out. Make sure the application has been completed in ink and check the application for legibility. Rewrite the information that is not readable in the margin with red pencil or pen for clarification. Okay, Ms. Rodriguez, everything looks good. Can I please see your ID? Ask to see a current and valid picture ID with the applicant's first and last name on it. If the applicant does not have a picture ID, Ask to see a utility bill, bank statement, or a government document with the applicant's name and the residence address used on the application. There you go. And I'm going to give you a receipt. In 10 to 14 days, you should receive a voter registration card in the mail. If you don't, go ahead and contact the election department. Okay. Put your name or ID number on the bottom receipt and date stamp the receipt with a date stamp that does not contain the name of your agency. Tell the applicant to hold on to her receipt until she receives her voter registration card in the mail. Then date stamp the bottom of the application in the lower left corner. Check the Agency box in the Validating Agency Use Only section. Put your name or ID number in the Received By box on the lower right hand side of the form. This indicates to the Election Department that you have seen ID from the applicant. You can only witness an applicant when they are present to complete the voter registration form and show their identification. The easiest way for the client to check if he or she is registered to vote is to go to either the Clark County Election Department's website or the Secretary of State's website. This completes Chapter 2. To continue, select Chapter 3 or any other chapter you wish to review.